it's time we had a real talk about the state of the tech industry. And the truth is that despite what many people think, coding is not dead. You're just not good enough. And in this video, I'm going to show you proof that coding is absolutely not dead and why coding is still one of the, if not the best skills that you can learn if you want to succeed in life and how the people who are standing out and still building great careers in software engineering have simply realized that we always sort of knew in almost every other industry, but specifically people in tech, especially in the past couple of years, simply haven't realized. Now, when people say that coding is dead, they usually point into graphs like this one that show the amount of jobs in 2022 or something like that and just how much lower the amount of jobs is right now but there's a couple of problems that i have with this argument it's undeniable that there were more jobs in the past but as you can see here according to this very graph that people look at there's still 200,000 jobs available right now for software engineers and this is just in the united states of course and just to put things into perspective here here for example i'm looking at glassdoor about jobs open for software engineers in the united states we can say that there are more than 39,000 jobs available just right Right now and if we look at something else like let's say an investment banker we can see that for investment banking there are only 851 jobs available and is anyone saying that investment banking is dead no of course not it's simply the case that in investment banking everyone always knew like it was an obvious fact that there's way less jobs available relative to the people who want these jobs so what do you need to do you simply have to stand out you need to understand what these companies want so that you can be one of those candidates who actually ends up standing out and getting those jobs in tech people simply haven't realized this because we were in this crazy market where everyone and their grandmother was getting tech jobs after writing a hello world program that people simply aren't used to the fact that to get top level jobs you actually have to be a strong candidate and you might also say like oh okay but there's a lot more people applying for these tech jobs because there's so many people learning to code now and that also might be true but let me tell you that as someone who has been on the other side like i worked a job before where i was literally reviewing people's resumes who were applying for this big company that i was working for and where i was actually doing interviews like i was interviewing people i don't think most people realize just how much like 90% of applications that these companies get absolutely suck. Like it was almost depressing how little effort almost everyone was putting into their application. And when this is the competition that you're running up against, really you're only competing against the top 10% of the top 5% people that ever even had a chance of landing any of these jobs. It was just in the past where we were in this market where the demand for software engineering was outstripping the supply so much that even if you were a terrible candidate, you could still get a job. Now we've just come back down to reality. We actually have to be a strong candidate to land one of these jobs. And before I tell you exactly how you can become this kind of strong candidate there's really two things that have happened that have led people to say that coding is dead or something like that first of them is that we are in an economic downturn like despite of what i just said of course i recognize that things are much more difficult than they used to be and it's not easy to get a tech job but really what has happened is just a quite a severe downturn in the market and the thing about the tech industry is that whenever there is a downturn in the economy like in the hiring in general tech is particularly severely affected but there's no reason to believe that just because we're in a downturn now it can't get up in the future and right now interest rates are already going down so it'll be interesting to see what actually happens and the second reason why people think that coding is dead is because of AI. And this is really kind of a dumb argument if you actually think about it. And if you look at the history of the industry for even five minutes, you can imagine before modern programming languages like Python came about, everyone was writing coding languages like assembly or something like that. And then imagine the first modern programming language like Python comes about. And obviously I'm oversimplifying. It's not like we went from assembly to Python, but you get the point here. Now you suddenly have this language that is like 10 times faster to write than the programming languages we had in the past so people might think like oh my god coding is now dead because it's so much quicker to write code now because of these new languages but did coding die no tech hiring has only improved because what did companies do well rather than writing the same amount of code with less engineers they simply have the same amount or even more engineers but they simply get a lot more done and a lot faster and a lot better 
The same thing is, I think, what is happening right now with AI. Rather than having less engineers to do the same thing, companies who still have the same level of ambition will simply get a lot more done for the same effort. But it's undeniable that AI has shifted the coding industry. What it takes to be a good software developer in 2025 is not the same thing as what it took to be a great software developer in 2019 or something like that. And I think there's like three pillars that you need to focus on if you want to become a great software developer that actually stands out and gets these top level jobs going into 2025 and beyond. But before we get into these three pillars, one key thing that you need to realize is that becoming a software developer is not just the same thing as learning to code. There's a lot more that goes into this. First of all, to really differentiate yourself, you need to choose a specific niche of programming that you're gonna focus on, and then you wanna just learn everything about it that you can. Because what companies look for is not just coders. They look for people who understand a specific domain of programming well enough to add value to these companies. And for beginners, there's many different niches that work extremely well, but one of them that you should definitely look into is QA engineering. As a QA engineer, you specialize in software testing. And why I think this is a really great field to get into in 2025 is because the demand for QA engineers is growing every single year. For example, according to Glassdoor, salaries in the US for this field start at $76,000 a year. And one great way to learn QA engineering specifically is the Software QA Engineering Bootcamp by today's video sponsor, Careerist. This program is designed to help you land your first job in tech in just six months. And there's tons of people who have done this successfully. With this bootcamp, you'll gain essential knowledge, hand-on practice, mentorship and career advice that is needed to succeed in tech regardless of your prior experience or education. And as a licensed education provider, Careerist can offer this interactive software QA engineering course such that it can be completed in just 16 weeks. And it's complete with personalized guidance from experienced mentors. Over a thousand Careerist graduates have already secured high paying jobs in tech across 42 different states. So if you want to take your first step towards a successful career as a QA engineer, you can follow my link down below in the description and use the promo code CODER to get a special $600 discount on the program. So what a niche of programming you choose, there are three key aspects of a successful software developer in 2025 that most people don't focus on. The first of them is pretty much what I just told you, the technical skills. And this is not what you think. This is not just about knowing how to code and knowing how to solve some lead code problems or something like that. In 2025, in this age of AI, being a competent software developer is a lot more about just knowing how all the pieces of software work together and specifically about understanding, for example, software architecture. It's less about knowing how to write some code. It's more about knowing what code to write. When do you use a specific framework? What kind of database do you need? How do you conceptually develop an API? How do you securely create payment processing? It's all these aspects that make software work together that you as a professional software developer need to understand how to put together into a functioning piece of software that is secure and everything like this. And how do you learn this? Well, you learn this by actually coding up projects from scratch. You need to understand how to build software, not just how to write code. The second pillar is mastering the skill of learning new things. And just to give you an example of what I mean here, just like uh, two months ago, I was reached out to by one of my friends who is a business owner in a different domain where he wanted to build this software, but he's not technical. So he needed someone to build the software for him. So he reached out to me and he was like, do you want to go 50-50? You can build it, I advertise it. Now the thing about this app that he wanted to build is in a domain of programming that I had literally never even touched on before. There's many different things that I would have needed to do that I have never done before in the past. My my question to you is, what would you say in this situation? Would you take it on or not? Most people would say no because they would be like, well, I've never done this before and I'm sorry, I don't really know how to do it. Just look for someone else. Whereas what I did is I took it on. I was like, yep, yeah, I'll do it. Even though I had no idea how to actually do it. But I know because I have the confidence in myself and specifically the confidence in my ability to learn things that whatever I take on, I can figure it out. I can go online, especially with AI. I can code up literally 
anything if I'm just willing to go out there and figure things out. Because there's now actually competition and you actually need to stand out, you need to have this mindset that you're willing to always go out there and figure new things out and like just be hungry to learn new things and build things even if you've not done them in the past. Because this is really what being a software developer means. It's not knowing how to write code, it's having the ability to figure things out as you go. And the third pillar that almost everyone ignores, especially in tech, is soft skills. What do I mean by soft skills? Where it's things like knowing how to communicate as a human in a team environment, knowing how to craft a good resume so you can actually showcase the coding skills that you have. And actually having a personality that you're actually the kind of person that people want to work with. We're no longer in a world where you can just be this nerd who just knows how to write a bit of code and you're going to get a job. No, today you actually need to be a holistic package. You need to be the kind of person where when someone interviews you, someone looks at you and they have 10 other options, they are going to want to choose you because they trust you and they can see that you're not just someone who knows how to write a bit of code, but you're someone who's going to be a pleasure to work with, someone who can be trusted to actually take on responsibility and even just in the job application process like I referenced before most people's resumes are so insanely terrible that there might be a very competent candidate behind that terrible application but because they didn't spend even five seconds thinking about how am I actually going to format my resume how am I actually going to sell my skills to this company they are simply going to throw your resume on the bin because they have so many other options so you need to put in effort into these kinds of things if you want to stand out in this day and age let me know what you think of this video probably a bit of a controversial video and I know I'm probably going to get hate but I think these are just the kind of things that just need to be said now I mentioned before that coding is kind of changing and the nature of the tech industry has changed a lot. In this video, I touched on this, but I made a more detailed video before where I, where I show you exactly how coding has changed and exactly how you can become a master developer in this new world of AI-driven coding. A lot of you really enjoyed that video, so I really, really recommend that before you do anything, you also watch this video right here. So watch that video next, and I'll see you in the next one.